Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros, kids. We got a bonus show this week. We got, we, Friday night, a dish. Well, this was one we wanted will. to get out quickly because um, I wanted. We've never had a, a week in the history of the show where we had two offensive linemen on mm -hmm. in the same week. Big that, week for us. That's one of them, and we have uh, uh, Jason Fox today, formerly of the. Uh, Miami Dolphins, who are better this year than they were last year, probably going to be better still in the, in the years to come, right? We'll, we'll see. Here's the interesting part, Jason. Uh, we do a lot of research on this show before our guests come on. Uh, I don't know if you're aware of this. When you type your name into Google, the first article that comes up is, parents of Jason Fox believe his sexuality was a reason for his murder. Obviously, I was a little alarmed by that with everything that's going on with Army Hammer right now, uh, wanting yeah. to grill his ex-girlfriends and everything. So I was like, oh, Jesus Christ, is this the same Jason Fox? Turns out it is definitely not. You played for the Miami Dolphins, and yeah. uh, uh, this was, it appears to be a young Latino. Yeah, and man. you also appear to be alive still. Yeah, can you confirm that? Are you, this, so you're alive, right? I, I can confirm that that's not me, but you have me okay. scared for <laughs> okay, uh, but so what do you do, Jason? Because um, clearly you're not dead, right? I uh, I I retired from your, or I retired from the NFL about four years ago. Played four years with the Lions and uh, two years with the Dolphins, and since then I've started a, a tech company down in Austin uh, called Earbuds. Yeah, and that's what we're here to talk about today. Because Earbuds is with uh, Pat Mahomes. Uh, pa sorry, Patrick, in case his mom is watching. Oh, does um, she get mad about Pat? She does, yeah. Yeah, you got to call him Patrick. Yeah, maybe don't name somebody something that you can shorten then, Mom. I mean, yeah. no offense. My mom did. It's saying. Ross. You can't shorten that. Can we going to call me Ro? And then uh, the the other partner is Bake. Bake yeah. Mayfield. Bake Mayfield. Uh, <laughs> Baker Mayfield is, uh, is the other partner. Now, that one I have a hard time with, Jason, and um, that's why I wanted you to explain your company because I, I, I need to talk about Baker Mayfield. I was at the game, I'm an Ohio State alum, I was at the game where he planted the flag uh, at our, our midfield. I've never been a real big Baker Mayfield fan. However, all of our listeners, we have so many listeners who are diehard Cleveland Browns fans. Uh, they love Baker Mayfield. He finally shook the demons away from Cleveland, uh, got their first playoff win in a, a million years, it seems like. And now they're playing the Kansas City Chiefs on Sunday. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I listened to the Joe Thomas podcast you guys did. And I, I, I got to hear your, your Baker thoughts. But listen, listen, Patrick is, they're, they're both, uh, you know, been amazing to us as a company. They're both investors, two of our largest uh, brand ambassadors. And Patrick has had an absolutely phenomenal career and won many accolades and will probably win many more. But you know, don't uh, you can't diminish what Baker's been able to accomplish. I mean, there's one guy I don't I would never bet against. It's him. He's a a walk on to a starter, to a Heisman winner, to a number one overall pick, and then to turn around a franchise to make the playoffs for the first time uh, in 20 plus years. I don't think you can uh, you can take that lightly. So I think Baker is, uh, you know an incredible person an incredible player and he'll go on to do uh, just as well yeah he's I, I think he might be a real life shane falco you know what i mean could be like he's <laughs> if you put that dude's heart in a in a fucking six foot three 225 pound frame yeah we wouldn't be having this conversation we'd be having a conversation about whether it's him or or patrick mahomes is the best quarterback in the nfl probably right because he's he's got i mean he's undersized smaller hands for a guy like that Hard to see over the line, especially when you have six foot seven fucking uh, uh, Jason offensive Fox, tackles yeah, yeah, yeah. in yeah. front of you. But he's he has performed he, he's oh, performed better than I thought, frankly. Same, um, and it helps that they've put the right pieces around him. I don't know about OBJ and his whole uh, the thing with the poop or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's always that's a <laughs> that's a <laughs> tough situation to walk out yeah. of, obviously. Yeah, but um, otherwise. But they, otherwise, look, yeah, look, he's he's done a lot with that team <clears throat> this year. And, um, you know, especially with, with the best wide receiver going down mm. early on in the season. And, uh, I, look, I've always been a big fan of Jarvis Landry anyways. Yeah. Um, uh, he's utilizing those guys. And week after week, you know, as much as I, you know, I have shit on him as a player, pun intended, for OBJ, obviously. <laughs> um, 
he's he's winning games. Uh, he is now tied with Tim Tebow. He's as a far winner. As playoff wins. He's a winner. He's a winner. That's it. He's you, a winner. Whatever else you can say about the guy, you know, he's a fucking winner. Yes, you can't really deny yeah. that. Absolutely. And and the other part that I I, I will <laughs> shine a spotlight on, which is why we wanted to have a, a you on the show today. What he's doing with his money, investing it in all of these different things, is what every athlete should be doing. You cannot turn on an NFL game on ESPN or AB, you know, ABC <laughs> or CBS without seeing some Baker Mayfield commercial. Um, he's got his hands in a bunch of different things. How did you guys connect for this product? Yeah, uh, and, and credit to Baker's team. I mean, Baker's a he's a winner. That you said it best, uh, and he's a competitor and. You know, I will take I'll take his heart over anybody's. Um, but he has he surrounded himself with a great team, um, which is based in Austin and in Camwood Ventures. Um, you know, their investment team reached out to us in the early days. We got connected through some mutual friends at uh, Texas Tech, and you know, we went through that process with them. I met the entire team, and uh, they decided to come on board uh, as a partner, which is really exciting for us. That's great. And, then, and, t and tell everybody about your company and what it is exactly and, and what you hope and dream for the future of it. Because it's super interesting and I don't think that I've heard anything like this before. No, it is. It actually yeah. is very interesting. It's kind of uh, like social media meets Spotify almost, you know, and, and for lack of a better phrase. But yeah, explain. You explain have a better works, elevator yeah. pitch than we do, I'm sure. I'd hope so. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, you guys are you guys are on the right track. So basically, what Earbuds is is we're social for music, we're the social music app. And how I thought of it was actually watching my first ever game in the NFL, watching uh, Cam Newton warm up five feet away from me, just while I was doing a, a boring lineman stretch. He was just dancing with his headphones on, getting the crowd into it, getting ready for the game. And I said, man, with eighty five thousand people here and millions more watching at home, and Cam's an individual with millions of social media followers, how many people would love to be in his headphones? And that's exactly what we've created. We've created a, you know, we have a partnership with Spotify and Apple, which is the app now. And we are actually Amazon Music and Pandora's first uh, private API partner too, where mm -hmm. you can tune in and listen along with it. It's with your favorite athlete, with your favorite artist, or, or it could be with your coworker, sister, brother, uh, anybody. And you can Share music and listen together in real time or retroactively on demand. Oh, so, so. It, it does work in real time. So when uh, when when we're sitting around, you know, having our first drinks of the day at ten a.m. Yep. Uh, yeah. Getting ready, maybe nine. Getting ready for the games to start, and we're watching our favorite players warm up on the field. We can literally listen to the same thing they're listening to in their headphones. Same with the NBA, et cetera, Right. In, in real time, and what's cool is we're wow. provider agnostic, which means if you have Spotify and they have Apple Music. Uh, you can tune. You can tune in and still listen along. Um, oh, shit, oh, this dude, is a I, great idea. This is unbelievable. Um, spell it out for the audience. That's what our, all our sponsors make us do here on the show. Is spell it out for the audience. That way, there's no confusion of where everybody can go. Because I think, look again. This is why we want to have you on the show. Because this product's super fascinating. With the playoffs coming up this weekend, you will literally be able to hear what your favorite players are listening to on the field. So spell out the name of your that app again in your company. <clears throat> Yeah, in, in the app store, it's just earbuds. If you search earbuds, we should be the first thing that pops up. Uh, and if you go to earbudsmusic.com, that's our site. And we're actually doing, uh, in honor of our two biggest uh, investors and partners playing together uh, against each other this week, and we're actually doing a fun <clears throat> fan sweepstakes where everybody can get involved. Where you can go to the website or download the app, uh, and uh, you tweet at earbuds live as our uh, Twitter handle if you tweet listen like Mayfield or listen like Mahomes so you enter for a chance to win some game worn signed memorabilia by them so uh, and there's so, some other partners like Bose and stuff through and some uh, free gear as well for, for a chance for people to win wow. so it should it should be a fun should be a fun weekend um, we also have uh, like you'll be able to see later today and in, in pregame before the game CBS Sports is revealing some uh, unique content about their, their pregame listening habits, and you'll be able to be in the mind of what your favorite athletes or superstars listen to before games. This is a fucking awesome idea. Yeah, I didn't I, know technology was there yet. <laughs> I'm actually going to spell this out. E-A-R-B-U-D-S music.com, earbudsmusic.com. <clears throat> Baker Mayfield is on the website right now. Because, it, dude, it, it is one of those things where, for real, you see every single player listening to something. And I'm always yeah. like, 
what is that? Yeah. Um, well, now you can listen along. Not only can you listen along, but there's a, a live chat feature, kind of like if they were, it's, it's as if the music that's playing in their head is live on YouTube and there's a chat function where you can, because I'm, I'm looking at some of the examples here and it's game day. Mahomes is, it's before the Patriots game. Mahomes is listening to whatever the fuck he's listening to. And on the uh, other tab, the, the chat tab, people are like giving him well wishes like, hey, have a good, great game or whatever the fuck. So you can communicate. Uh, directly back and forth with your fans as well. That's also a yeah. lot of pressure, though, because what if you let down your fans of what you listen to? Like, <laughs> hypothetical, like, because I, I, no lie, I listen to music on the way into the office to get amped for the shows. Uh, we do a lot of shows throughout the day. I want to start the day off right, and I think that's everybody with music, right? right. What do you think a guy like me listened to on the drive over to the studio Probably today? Warrant, Cherry Pie. No, but this is, <laughs> it's, it's, it's close, and it's a good one. Um, what do you think a guy like me listened to? Oh man, if there's one thing I've learned from earbuds is that, uh, you know, music has always been behind this, like, you know, protective shield and no one's really, you know, sharing, sh shared their music until really recently. We've seen so much of people sharing on social, what they're listening to. And now people want to share that with the world, <clears throat> but man, people I thought I knew really well are listening to things I would never expect them to, whether it's Bieber or, or you know, so, some type of poppy thing where they're listening to hardcore mm. hip hop when they're kind of the, you know, you would never expect that from them. And so I, I've learned not to guess what, what people yeah. like to listen to. Well, I'm to. making you, Jason. That's the fucking deal. Dude. <laughs> just for your drinking, right. bros. Yeah, All right. Right. Just for your sake, though, Justice uh, Bieber is a young pop musician. Correct. Since you're older, I don't know if you knew that. No, I'm super young. I think Bieber's only a couple summers younger than me, actually. But uh, whatever. Um, give, it, give a <laughs> shot at what I was listening to today. Oh, man. I, I'm, going, I'm going like 90s like rock uh, or... Or 2000s hot, maybe like uh, some 41 or like Blink Blink 182. Or you know, it's funny that so our our co-host uh, Jared Taylor, um, R.I.P. Who is not here today. He's not dead, <laughs> but we always think he's in a ditch somewhere, so yeah. he might be. That's why we throw out the R.I.P. before it. Just that case. is his entire playlist to a T. Yeah. If, if that, no lie, he listens to that all fucking day. I go by what's going like trending at the moment or going on in the world. Um, I'm a guy who likes to listen to new music a lot, uh, or if I catch and or watch something and then I'm into it and I'll, I'll go back to their catalog. I was listening to Jive Talking by the Bee Gees on the way mm. over here because I watched that doc on <laughs> HBO um, a couple weeks ago and I was fascinated by like, holy shit, I forgot like how many hits the Bee Gees had. And then would this be something that I would come out to and rage to? Yes, dude, I'm still going to put Jive Talking by the BGs on that list. One of the best things in life and music is a song and a genre that you don't really like that's a great song that you like. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Like the song Cautious by Emma Rosa is a song that I really like. And I would never listen to that kind of music. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I'll just listen to it on repeat sometimes because it's such a good song. Hello but, by Adele's one like that. It's just oh, a great yeah, song. Oh, yeah, dude. I, I told, dude, I don't know if I told this story in this show. We, my wife wanted to see Adele in concerts. And so I took her, uh, it was for like our anniversary or something in New York. And Adele shot up like from the stage. She didn't just walk out. She came up from the floor. And it was it, like, it happened to be just right, right next to my wife, like 10 feet away. And then she just said, hello, like that. Yeah. scared the shit out of her but also she's just immediately started crying to that and i was like oh my god like do you think there's a lot of pressure on adele when she answers the phone yes she you've yeah. got to answer it like that like, like every single to. fucking time you yeah. have to answer like yeah, that yeah, yeah. Man, i don't know i think she probably has a pre-recorded version that she just hello and i think like, it's yeah, like yeah, it's like if you called oj simpson and he's got to answer the phone I'll, I'll call you right back i'm looking for the real killers still um you got to do that you know what i'm saying yeah then when he calls back he's like look if i did it uh Dot dot dot. Dot dot dot. Right? Yeah. 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 Uh yeah. I, I see you as a nineties hip hop guy, by the way. Yeah. I uh yeah, I I'm I listen to a lot of I have a wide range of what I listen to. I, I get I get in moods. There's times where I'm just listening to uh a lot of nineties. Nineties is the best generation ever. Uh but I still listen to whatever's trending now too. So it's it just whatever mood I'm in and whatever I'm doing at the moment. Am I working out or am I working so um but one of the cool things like this exact conversation what we're doing right now one thing we haven't talked about uh, one of the the features that earbuds allows you to do is 
you can add commentary. So whether it's, you know, Baker before the game saying, hey, guys, come get hype with me, you can use your voice to leverage, you know, to talk to your fans, to talk to your listeners, or you can add commentary in between songs like, hey, guys, I just, I just found this song on this documentary, and did you know, and artists have used this to, you know, announce singles, and they talk about it, what, what inspired them to write this song, or, uh, you know, uh, why this song is important to them or when they wrote it or how they thought of the, the lyrics, uh, which is a really cool way to just get that uh, a deeper peek behind behind the music. Yeah, I because throughout life, I think there's always a soundtrack to everything that's going on, right? And you always remember these certain songs <laughs> or moments or whatever, and they stick with you forever. What a great fucking idea. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, like, shit, I remember watching a Mike Tyson fight, and uh, there was a song called Time for Some Action with Raekwon, the chef who sang that song. And like the first time I heard it, I didn't know who it was. Obviously then you go and look for it and then you jam out to it. And then you feel as hyped up as Mike Tyson was walking into the ring that night. And you're like, holy shit, this is awesome. Yeah. That song <clears throat> sticks with me. I was in a car accident when I was a kid and it was to hold on by yeah. uh, the, the Phillips sisters, you know? Well, there's uh, the, what you're talking about is with the soundtrack to life thing. We just a couple of weeks ago, we had Matthew McConaughey and he was talking about uh, Days and Confused, the first homework any of them got was yeah. that the director made us a, a mixtape for every single major character and he gave them the mixtape and for a couple of weeks they had to listen to it. That was all they did. No, no scripts, none of that bullshit, just music. Like, here's who your character is, listen to that shit. Something like this would be pretty cool. Uh, it would be awesome, dude. If you reached that. out to Richard Linklater, who did... Uh, he does it for all of his movies, apparently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if you reached out to him and got the Days and Confused soundtrack on there... Um, that would be rad. Uh, but, I mean, there's endless possibilities with this. Has there ever been a song that the fans turned on and they were like, dude, why the fuck are you listening to that? <laughs> there has. I'm not sure if it has happened with Baker or Patrick. But, like you said, there's a live chat. So people can be like, dude, next. I mean, like, but people are providing real-time feedback. But I'm not going to say if that's happened in one of theirs. I'm not sure. But I've definitely been in sessions where people – don't like the song that popped up, but it, it's, it's cool. It's like that, that real time feedback. You know, what would be cool is if like uh, Patreon or Twitch or something like that, fans could tip the, uh, the person to get them to change the song. Or something <laughs> like that. For real, that, that used to be a big thing on, on particularly on Twitch for gaming. Uh, usually people will play music in the background and you could fucking a dollar change the song. You That's I mean? hilarious. I always picture cause Dan, uh, Dan's a veteran, by the way. Um, I, I, I it, this is a serious question. I know it's going to sound like a joke, but um, did you, were you guys allowed to listen to shit when you were fucking kicking indoors and everything? Yeah. Uh, what were you listening to? Like, that would be an interesting playlist. Lamb of God, mostly. No shit. Yeah. Um, I have Lamb of God lyrics tattooed on my arm from several things that we did over there, yeah. So when you were, when you were listening to it, was that going through everybody else's channel as well? No, we yours? weren't listening to it over the channel. I had a fucking Bose speaker sitting on the front of our Humvee right there. And it was just blasting music. So we were driving through and we would just like all fucking bail out and fuck shit up and get back in. As we were doing uh, SSC, like sensitive site exploitation, people were searching the area, take the speaker out, put it on the hood of the car, just let the neighborhood know that we're there. You know what I mean? Dude, I, was there, I would I like to have you. Dan's kill list on your, on your site of yeah. who he yeah. used to murder people to. Yeah, it's, you, you, don't, you don't wanna hear that. If you're in Baghdad, you don't wanna hear that noise. <laughs> right? like that, that noise means some fucking pain is on the way uh, and it may it got us hyped up too you know music does that oh yeah for sure i mean dude even as a kid man like you know i can remember as early as like fourth grade going to like basketball games at rec league and listening to music to get amped up for games mm -hmm. and things like that and my parents telling me to turn it down or whatever in the back seat of the car um fuck what a great what a great idea who came up with this were you the dude or was it somebody else yeah, like I said, the Cam Newton uh, story kind of inspired it. That was back in 2011. Um, and then 2016 was the last year I played in the NFL. And that was around the time when uh, Michael Phelps, I don't know if you remember that moment, uh, before his first race. Yes, I was wondering what he was listening to. <laughs> it was the number one thing trending worldwide on mm. Twitter. Is, well, what's Phelps listening to with 23 million tweets uh, asking him oh, that? Shit. There's a, a mark. Yeah, there's I would say so, right? He answered it. What was the what was the answer to it? Yeah, he. It was all hip hop. It was mostly Eminem and Drake and uh, I forget the entire list. But yeah, it was hip hop stuff. 
Yeah, man, that's that's so true, man. That was going around everywhere what Phelps was listening to. Because he came out with those headphones. He says, I was in the flapping zone. Flapping the arms, you know, just I was in giving the it zone. the old hat. I was in the zone with Future's track Stick Talk blaring in my headphones. That's what he said. Yeah. Stick Talk was the one where he's flapping his arms around. Because the thing is, is like, dude, as a kid, too, you, everybody's got their favorite players. And then you want to emulate that. So you can go on the site and then listen to I mean, shit, look at Jordan, dude. Jordan, got, Jordan turned a whole generation of white children that had been wearing doc shoes into children that were now paying $150 for fucking tennis shoe sneakers that they would never play basketball in. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and they ended up killing I mean, each other for it, which well, is great. Um, I was surprised at Jordan's, by the way, speaking of that. I was watching the, when the last dance doc came on. What, his playlist? Oh. I was not. He's an, old, he's an old man in a young man's body. It was weird, been. man. He was in the back of that thing, and he was like, oh, dude. And then somebody was like, what are you listening to? And he's like, I got the new Guy Levert or somebody shitty. And it was like, yeah. that's what you're li- You're Michael Jordan, dude. You're listening to that? Um, Dude, that's what that's what I was talking about earlier. Is you, you really never know. Um, but uh, yeah, we actually got tagged a bunch in, when the last dance came out because of, of that moment with Phelps or not Phelps uh, Jordan with his headphones mm-hmm. on. But it's actually pretty cool. Like we can see, you know, if if uh, I mean we have several other people. I mean Baker uh, Mahomes are playing uh, this weekend, but we've had big name artists, uh, you know, the Gronkowskis are on, Rob's gone live before several games. If you can see if Rob includes a song, we can actually show through our data of how often that song gets replayed by all these other users on earbuds or on other platforms. <clears throat> the level of influence is pretty cool. So, I mean, to be, we call it like Mike, like to be like Mike. So it's funny we're talking about Michael Jordan, but like the, hey, Patrick's Super Bowl playlist that he went live with before the Super Bowl last year, we still get, you know, hundreds if not thousands every week people come back and listen re-listen to that because when the when the 12 year old kid that <laughs> Mahomes idol when he goes and works out or when they go throw the football around that's that's what they want to jam to you know so what be you know be great is if we could get uh the playlist that these super successful people listen to before they bang Oh, yeah, the bang list, dude. Yeah, like, like what you're listening to in the bangless, bedroom. Yeah. This could go out into porn star realm, too, yeah. where it's just like, what the you know, your fuck music. Like, what are you banging to these days? I don't want to know what porn stars are fucking to. They're on... Yeah, but normal normal people, would like, you know, there, there's some people that where I look at, like, Jennifer Lawrence. What, what's she banging to tonight? What's she getting mm-hmm. boned to? You know what I'm saying? Um, I, I bet it's... Uh, I bet it's something indie, you know? Probably. Uh, she supports artists, small artists, and things like that. Like, like... Little people, artists, or yeah, tiny, tiny, just tiny people. You know, man. If I, if there was a, a if I walked into a, like a, a a restaurant or a bar, or whatever, and it was live music and it was a band of all little people, I yeah, would, I wouldn't be able to do or say anything. I would just have to sit Indian style on the floor <laughs> for probably forty five minutes and let that wear off. I would never. I may. I may never get over it. I don't know what I would do. And there, because there is so much weird shit, dude, that you you just do with music, man. Yeah. I mean, I remember like your morning drive, your shower music, your workout music, your fucking pregame music, what you listen to when you're sad, your breakup music, yeah, your fucking oh, I just got a promotion music, I'm gonna celebrate your fucking party music. It's come on. One of my biggest like bench press <laughs> days was uh, Falco Rock Me Amadeus, but it was a remix of it. I went bug fuck, dude, on that that day, and. Um, it was the first time I ever got 300. I'll never forget it. And RIP to Falco, obviously. Died in a car accident over in Germany. It but, wasn't because uh, of, uh, of you bench pressing, though, I don't think. But I, think it, I think it said something to do with it. Because yeah. like, when I lift weights, um, you, can hear, uh, you can hear it around the world. Yeah, because so you, I think you shriek, heard it and crashed his car. You shriek at the top of your lungs on every exhale, basically. Yes, every yeah. exhale. And then when I climax, too, uh, it's a, an elongated <laughs> scream for yeah. a, around 19 seconds um, when I love yeah. me. I'm a generous uh, lover, for um, sure. maker of love, obviously, Jason. Yeah. And uh, but I can remember, like, dude, even college days, right? Because you, you have roommates or people living in close quarters. Everybody was always playing music to bone to because you didn't. You were trying to drown out whatever was going on in there. Not me. I was trying to listen. Yeah, I had, a, were, I, had yeah. A, I had a cup up next to the door. Yeah. Like, what's going on in there? Then I would just kick the door down. And I'm, I'm not wearing clothes, obviously. Obviously, right? yeah. <laughs> but I came to school to party, man. I didn't come to learn shit. Exactly. You exactly. Went, speaking of going to school, you went to Miami. How was, uh, how was Miami back in the day? Yeah, Miami was great. Um, I, I, had invi- I went to Miami for two reasons. One, when I committed there, they were ranked third in the country. 
20 more games and championships than anyone else. And uh, what, what year is that? So I, I, I committed in 2005. I got there in 2006. Um, okay. And I, I wanted to win a championship and I wanted to go to the NFL. Those are my only two goals. And I thought Miami would give me the best shot, chance to do both of those. And really? one of those like, came true. So. The champ- yeah, the championship in college. Really? You thought they were going to do that, huh? Larry Coker had a lot of success there. Yeah. Co- <laughs> so he, Coker, he, left, he, he left like the year after you got there, right? Right. Yeah. Coker, his first two years, he went to back-to-back national championships. and He was still the coach. And so I, uh, I wanted to go be a part of that. And I must have brought the program down or something because we, we weren't able to do that when I was there. Yeah, I think it's you. They, of those two, they won one and lost one, right? right. Well, they should have won two. The, the call against Ohio State, I'm, I'm not – over yet. I was there. Yeah. I was at that Which, game. I was about uh, maybe 50 yards from that play. It was definitely pass interference. And Ohio State yeah. won in double overtime. Ohio State uh, won because um, Maurice Claret, who spent more time in jail than he did on the football field, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, had a great game, and Willis McGahee's knee got fucking shoveled in. That's yeah. what really happened In the there. third quarter, yeah. yeah. I, no lie, I really was at that game. I uh, uh, Funny story about it. I... I didn't see the flag and, and nobody else did either. So inside the stadium, they lit off the fireworks as if Miami had won the national championship. And I was like, fuck this. I was with my girlfriend at the time and I, we were walking out and Ohio State fan stopped me in the tunnel and he goes, there's a flag on the play. There's a late flag on the play. I was like, what? So we came back in, watched the rest of the game. Obviously, Ohio State won. And then I watched that replay again later. And uh, I mean, clearly it was a fast interference, obviously. But uh, you know that. I don't, I don't need to tell you that. Uh, yeah. Look, Ohio State. Uh, we lost uh, Monday night. I was at that game as well on Monday night. So, um, I bet I bet you their playlist was the theme from Mash. The uh, <laughs> do, 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 whatever yeah, that fucking song is. It was, it's, uh, it's very molded. It makes you feel like like somebody's about to kill themselves at the end of this song. Yeah. It was sure. probably "How to Save a Life" by you know the I'll theme song from Grey's Anatomy <laughs> because everybody was out of that game. Yeah. I didn't even know who was left on that that team. I was like, what yeah. are we? What are we doing? When the fourth string running back came in with a, a defensive back's jersey number on, I was like, hey, man, are you an actual player on this team or are you not? Because, he's, he's, uh, got a, he's got a piece of paper and it's written in crayon, I am 20. <laughs> yeah, exactly. it's, like a, it's like a 45-year-old janitor. He's like, <laughs> fuck did this guy come from? That's awesome. Uh, I, Go ahead. Uh, I, said, I thought Ohio State was going to have a – have a chance in that game or at least cover but i was i was completely wrong i, I well, honestly it would have been a one score game one way or the other had everybody been healthy on Ohio uh, State yeah probably. if everybody would have been healthy it would have been a great game but and they weren't Trey so. sermon was the key too and he broke his collarbone <clears> on the first play and it was just like yeah they only had the, the only chance they really had is to jam the ball down alabama's throat all day it. and then throw over the middle yeah which they could have done either if sermon hadn't got hurt but who knows now it doesn't matter now yeah you'll never know and part of the game is staying on the field correct and, and so, uh there it is. you know last man standing wins and that's that the, them's the rules so i'm not i wasn't that bitter about that loss um you know, because of what had happened, obviously. But, the, man, the cool part is, is like, shit, I saw all those dudes out on the field, you know, warm up and everything. I'm a fan who gets there early because I like all that stuff. And uh, I've always been curious about what they're listening to. Um, fuck, man. I, what a great idea. For yeah. Real. Like, and it's, this, it's, this is good timing to come on our show, too, because we got a lot of Chiefs fans. We have a lot of uh, Browns fans as yeah. well. Yeah. I'm actually going to the game this weekend. Are you? Uh, yeah. Are you? Is, yeah. is Jason, are you going to the game? Or are you getting, are you? No? I'm, not, I'm not going to the game, unfortunately. Well, it'd be, you know what would be super fortunate is if you had some uh, tickets to give Yeah, me. some extra tickets for Danthony here for, for an emergency episode. It, it's your two horses in this. How are you not going to the yeah, game? Yeah, you should, you should definitely be at the game. Come what's, on, what's wrong with you? Although you won't have any fucking cell reception at the game, so you won't be able to pay attention to what's happening on your fucking platform probably, right? Yeah. yeah we, we have a lot going on. Actually, the last time they played each other, I was at the game, and I've gone to several Browns and Chiefs games since, but I'm setting this one out. This but, is going to be a good one. I'm, I'm really looking forward uh, to this game. I don't know. I mean, I it's t- it's going to be a fun game to watch is what I, I yes, mean. Yes, yes. Look, both of those teams are always fun to watch. Um, I've, I've made my bets already, and I took uh, Chiefs 9.5 on this one, and I'm all in on them. Um, what I did tell my, one of my best friends who's a Cleveland Browns fan on that show, Phil Sees, because he's – Browns fans live and die by every – last second of their bullshit and uh and i love it like that's why browns fans are amazing um but we have a ton of browns fans listeners um what i said was the chiefs often play lazy and uh they haven't been covering the spread as of like the last five or six games 
Because it's like, I mean, their last three playoff games, they've been down big. Big. And then it's like, all right, we're the Chiefs. Let's turn it up and then light them on fire. Uh, I wonder if one of these games, this is what I told Phil C's last night. I said, I said, I wonder if one of these games, it's going to come back to catch him. And if it is, the Browns could do it this, this weekend if, if they're playing lazy again, the Chiefs. Yeah. It just depends on which Chiefs team you're going to get. Yeah. Right. No, I mean, the Chiefs are, you know, if not the talented, most talented team in the league. I mean, when they play like it, they are. Mm-hmm. Uh, but like, like I said at the beginning of the show, man, Baker's a winner. He's a fighter. Uh, he, he makes things happen. Um, no one gave them a chance. Uh, I put the house on the Browns to win last, last week and, and it worked. And, Oof. you know, I'm, I, uh, I put the house on the, on the steel. That was my lock of the week was the Steelers at, at three. They limped in, uh, they, they got him at three. I just don't think they took the game seriously enough to be honest with you. Like yeah. w- once they started playing, I mean, shit, they dropped 40 I, points, like in a matter yeah. of seconds. But the, the opening quarter going down 28-0, like, because they still only lost by one score at the end of it. Yeah. I think it was a mistake for Pittsburgh to not play its starters in that last game. They had been on, they had been on a slide. They needed another game together, at least a half together, for mm-hmm. just to get, it, get in rhythm, get some confidence back, because they limped into the playoffs. But instead, they took that game off and then apparently took at least half of the second game off as well. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That mentality flows yeah. through. That's why you have to listen to music before the game to get hyped up. You know I mean? <laughs> exactly. It is. I don't know what Ben Roethlisberger was listening to. Uh, and he his... was listening to the sound of uh, it's whales. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. just sonar, right? The I, whole... I, thought you were gonna, I thought you were going to say rape me by Nirvana. but uh, uh, Yeah, maybe. Yeah, two on the nose. They like uh, 90s music. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who's who's some guys out there that you you would love to have uh, as part of your roster? Like who's your wish list out there? Oh man, we have I think about 150 NFL players. Uh, would love to start expanding more into the NBA. We have a few players. I think we have five or so. Like Josh Hart has been active several times, but man, I'd really love to to grow into the, the NBA and, and other leagues as well. And then, uh, we also have what's actually a really cool plug is. Um, you mentioned Twitch earlier. Mm-hmm. We announced a partnership with the Fan Control Football League uh, last week, which is, uh, if you're not familiar with it, it, it is a league ran through Twitch where it's basically playing Madden uh, in real time, but before every, it's crowdsourced play calling. So everybody on Twitch can call the plays. All the, the coaches are like Quavo, uh, Marshawn Lynch. It's all celebrity coaches. Um, but then there was a music element too through earbuds, so they can you know crowdsource the, the the playlists as well that are going on in the locker room and everything before games and all through earbuds, which is really exciting. And uh, want to keep expanding into you know more and more leagues and more and more opportunities. Can you imagine Marshawn Lynch as a head coach? Okay, oh, he would just show up in the huddle, and be like, "All right, yep, walk away, good to go." Yeah, yeah. Uh, man, a few the, words. The sound but, of skittles uh, pouring into his mouth. Yeah, but he's a um, he's a, a fucking gangster. Yeah, Le- LeBron James, have you reached out to his camp? He's always listening. I feel like that guy's got e- earphones on, listening to music all day long. KD too. He's in the he tech. Is. Yeah, KD's big he in is. tech. Yes. Yeah, we're actually uh, talking to Thirty Five Ventures, which is uh, KD's um, mm-hmm. you know venture, venture team. LeBron's team is a little harder to get a hold of, as you can imagine. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but, yeah, uh, they're yeah. they're trying desperately to fucking keep his hairline in place right now. I think. Yeah, there's there's a lot of people working on that hairline for LeBron yeah. right now. Shave your head, shave your head. Yeah, at that just point. go full Mont- Jordan, man. If you want to yes. be Jordan, and be Jordan. Start shaving your head. Smoke Kobe more did. cigars. Uh, uh, develop a gambling problem. You you have a lot of work to do, LeBron. Come on, yes, dude. Kobe did it. It's he not all about championships. Too. No, it's not all about championships. No. Sometimes you got to do the fucked up shit, too. Yeah, he wants to be a movie star, though. part of the process. You can't replicate uh, John Michelle Baskerat's art without fucking doing a little heroin, man. That's just the way it is. You got to shoot up. You got to shoot up. That'd be a great one, too. Musicians, what they do heroin to, what music they listen to. <laughs> In the white room with black room. You know, like, I just, deep purple shit like that. Yeah. Um, that'd be a, a, yeah. a nice drug list. I'll go darker. Um, I know you were expecting to hop into a convo like this tonight. Um, (laughs) I'll go darker. Like I always think about what celebrities are dying to, like what music they die to, like Amy Winehouse. Like what was she listening to when she drank that entire bottle of vodka after being sober all that time that, that caused her to have a heart attack? Like what, what was the playlist? You know? 
Yeah, I, I don't know, and I'm not going to comment on that one. But you do have a lot, you do have a lot of good ideas. I'll, well, I'll, to, I'll tell I'll tell you why. That. I'll tell you why. So when celebrities die, this is a sick thing that I, I do, and I don't know why I do it. You like to see their last tweet or whatever? I like to go to their last tweet, their yeah. last Instagram post, and their last story to kind of see what they were going through. Mac Miller's recently was the one that got me because he, on his Instagram stories before he died, it was his album playing on a, like the actual, he had a vinyl of his own album playing. Uh, it's a song called So It Goes. And I'm a gigantic fan of that song. That album was fucking amazing. But that was the song that was playing and you could hear like the scratching of the record and all that stuff. And for whatever reason, he just pressed story for like a minute. So you just saw this album in this dark apartment, wherever the fuck he was, listening to that song and that was probably what he died to. And I was like, oh shit. Whenever I hear that song, that's all I think of. And I know that's super dark and you probably can't comment on shit like that, but... Uh, Man, a, a nice death playlist would be great, you know? Because I always think about if I'm in a hospital and you can gather all the family around you, they're always saying, oh, he was surrounded by friends and loved ones. And they were playing his favorite songs in the room. What did he die to? Yeah. You know, what did Trebek die to the other day? I mean, it is kind of, uh, I guess, dark, but um, it's not uncharacteristic of art, right? I mean, uh, one of the best books in my opinion one of the best nonfiction books in in the 20th uh century was a grief observed by c.s lewis and it's about his bereavement process after his wife died right mm -hmm. super dark yeah. but it, it gives you some uh some gl Insight. some glimpse into the mind of somebody that's going through that particularly a mind like his um which a lot of people aspire to emulate and i think uh seeing what people go through can be inspiring can also be a warning sign right yeah like, the the overdoses and suicide and things like that are often the culmination of a, of a, of a tragic downward spiral. You yeah. know what I mean, and if you're mm -hmm. able to map what that looks like, you can avoid it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. In some ways you can learn from it at least. I don't think that's that dark, frankly. If, if I was going to die, like I, I, I had picked out a song already. It's the outro by M83. Like I'd like to die to that one going on in the background. I know it's super weird, but uh, you know, yeah. If I had to kick off, like, I'd be so pissed off if it was fucking blues travelers, like the hook brings you back or something like that, where it's like, God damn it, am I dying a popper? Like, you know, let's it's say- like, You know what that's like? That's like when you're fucking pounding off yeah, and you're getting ready to blast, and all of a sudden the dude's fucking face and butthole show up in the seat. You're like, oh, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. God you've damn got, it. You've got yeah. to finish anyways. Yeah. Like, yeah. dude, if, if I got shot, like leaving a restaurant or something like that, and I've got like- I don't know, 18 seconds left on this earth. And all of a sudden I heard a fucking loud harmonica from John Popper, dude. And the hook brings you back or a bag of Lay's potato chips rustling around. Yeah. God. <laughs> Damn it. Would I be pissed off? You want to hear, that. you want to hear some real music? This is the sound of a Sprite claw being made. Right yeah. Now. Have you, you thought about getting into uh, ASMR? We, we haven't, uh, we've explored it a little bit. Um, uh, we, we haven't, we, we've stayed really just focused on music. We're, Looking to explore into podcasts, but that's uh, probably more like Q2 or Q3 this year. Hey, look, we got a media company, 16 million downloads a month. So uh, yeah. if, you, if you wanna hop in and live inside the mind of a genius, I'll tell you what my fucking playlist is, and we'll get real, we'll get real deep together. It's mostly Taylor Swift. Yeah, yeah a lot of T-Swift, actually. I feel like we should wait and hear uh, her ex-boyfriend's songs before we pass judgment, though. You know what I mean? Yeah, I will say this. Um, even though like, I don't think she's that rad of a person, you can't deny that she's just grinding out hits. Oh yeah, Max Martin is writing all of them for her, so she's grinding out hits for sure. She doesn't write any of that music. Yeah. Uh, I, I, so I watched the documentary. Like, she, she does work with a team of people, and I think they're all credited, I will say that. Oh yeah, for but, sure, she's not stealing shit. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying that no. Max, Max Martin, the guy that wrote Baby One More Time, has written most of her hits. Uh, uh, we are never getting back together. Half the the red album. I knew you were trouble. Twenty two. Yeah. All shake it off. Blank space. Bad blood. Wildest dream. Style. New romance. All those songs yeah. were written by this dude. Yeah. Not well, her. and her. I would. But imagine she's a, a great performer. Bit. There's no question about that. Both. But uh, there's a song called Exile with uh, Boney Vare on that folklore album that came out. Like that would be one you'd be shocked to be on my playlist. Like. I just think it's yeah. an amazing song. And even though I dislike her and he's a fucking ridiculous human, I watched, uh, she did a, a doc on uh, Disney plus that just came out maybe two weeks ago about the making of that album. And then 
they never got to play it together because of COVID and uh, in the same studio. So they got back together, sat down with everybody and went through song Wait, by song. Wait, I thought you said they were the never studio. getting back together. That's what I thought too. Fucking, <laughs> now, so not only is, is Max Martin writing a song, she's a goddamn liar yeah, too. Yeah, and, and I'll write your name. That's probably what it was. Like, hey, yeah. I'll, I'll write your name for writing this shit. Hmm. Um, but I watched that and it was just like, ah, all right, shit. Like that, there's a lot of interesting music that people listen to that you would never guess yeah. in a million years. I gotta say my, my, I, you, my favorite musicians uh, in the world, I'd probably wanna hang out with, but a lot of the music I like, I don't. There's no yes. chance that I would want to hang out with those people. Me neither. Like, I don't want to hang out with Chris Martin. I like, I like Coldplay and shit, like, back in the day. And Can like, you imagine hanging hang out, out with him? him? Oh, let me tell you about Goop. Yeah, yeah, yes. So that's a perfect <laughs> example, dude. Dude, stop it. Uh, the song Fix You is probably the best <laughs> song that Coldplay has, right? And I, I watched some interview where he said he was writing it nude, and was, was, it was about Gwyneth Paltrow and something they were going through, and I was like, God damn it, man. I didn't want to fucking know that Yeah, don't that ruin shit. the song. Yeah, I don't I want to know that. Um, I like how we're we're like just leveling all these hard opinions about people that he's probably going to have to work with at some point. No, isn't that <laughs> great? Oh, no, this is good. I, I just didn't know you guys knew so much about T Swift and uh, Every, everything, dude. Did you read the new Phil Collins lawsuit from his ex-wife? I don't know. It is so that. fucking good. Um, What's the uh, genesis of this? Nailed it. So, in every line of this lawsuit is one of the songs that he wrote. So she was just like, yeah, you know, he would come in smelling of alcohol because he was an alcoholic and, and I could feel it in the air tonight. And so yeah. I, no lie, the, the Genesis line is in there. She's, in the she's, air tonight. She has puns in her lawsuit. It, it, is, yeah. <laughs> it is endless. So, and, and it's almost every song he has written because she wanted it to go public and wanted all the shit to go public along with the things that like the negative shit she was saying about him. Well, that's pretty funny. I, that's what I thought. And then if you look at a picture of him, um, it's this weird, like, Chinese lady, and uh, who knows what re the, the real sitch was, but she's claimed, and this is what made the headlines, and then couple that with the lawsuit <clears throat> with all the puns in it, um, she claimed that uh, he was an alcoholic, for like, f and it didn't shower or brush his teeth for 14 months, <laughs> and that eventually he stunk so bad, the halitosis and his body odor, that she had to sleep in a separate wing of the house, because he was in like a deep depression or whatever, when she said it, I was like, "Yeah, eh, I can totally picture Phil Collins fucking doing some <laughs> shit like that, right?" No, I can't imagine anybody doing that. Phil Collins, yeah. though, he's anybody. a weird one, man. No, there's, I mean, I, there's, I've, I've gone about forty-five days without a shower in a in Baghdad, right? Mm -hmm. Terrible situation, um, and I could smell my own nuts when I sat down, and it was, yeah. you know, how you, I mean, yeah. generally speaking, your own farts and your own body odor is not very offensive to you. It's the way mm -hmm. the old factory system works. That doesn't that doesn't smell like a threat to you, so it doesn't have that extra bit of bitter smell. Sure, you know what I mean. That's how that's biologically why it works that way. Anyways, I was horribly offended by the way I smelled. Yeah, I've I've been offended by the way I've smelled a couple of times. Where yeah. I was like, Jesus Christ. Yeah, like you can literally as soon as I sit down, I can smell my own nuts. Yeah, and I'm like, no, this is this has to stop. It's such a distinct smell too, like that whole region. Your taint, sack, and balls area, like, typically it's after sex and then you go to the gym, right? Because that's, you're getting everything out of your system there. Uh, and that's living in your shorts and you're like, ah, shit, man, I should probably get out of here. People can smell that. So you're you saying know? you still got cum dick and then you go to the gym, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. and, and you, go, you go work out or go for like a five mile run and then you're like, oh, yeah. God. God damn, what are you going to fucking teabag some curry next? What the fuck is wrong with yeah, you? Yeah, like, oh, line, I, you guys I smell shower awful. between all that. Uh, offensive linemen smell terrible. Do you guys smell bad? Uh, I mean, I don't think I've never been told I smell bad, but I have played with LA guys. Uh, I'll, I'll be honest, especially one guy in college and then one guy uh, in Detroit. I can think of. I mean, kind of knows it. No one of those smelly guys in the locker room. Oh, but, in Detroit, uh, was it? Uh, was he on the? Was he on defense or offense? I'll say it's on offense, and he wasn't a starter, so I, I, you probably won't be able to guess him. Okay. I'll look down their fucking roster and see everything. Okay. <laughs> we'll go down the whole fucking roster. I'll, I'll tell you this. If, shit. You, if you guess it, I'll, I'll say you're, that you're correct. I'll just say I'm every not. single name. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'll tell you, I've been in NFL, Major League Baseball, NBA, and uh, hockey locker rooms, and hockey locker rooms smell way worse 
than any other uh, locker room I've ever been in. Yes, I, they never wash their pads. The pads and the, the uh, particularly the, 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 particularly the goalie equipment. It's sm it smells like Bigfoot's dick. It is the worst smell I've ever smelled in my life. Ever. Those guys are dirt bags. It's like somebody fucking took a shit on hair and then lit it on fire. Yeah, yeah. It, it, the the smell of the locker room the, before the season, like in training camp, it's it's been deep cleaned so many times. Mm. But the smell of the locker room at the end of the season mm. when everything has been sitting in everybody's mm. lockers and just got a million cleats in there, it's it does get it does feel a little. It's probably uh, different now with COVID, though. Yeah, right? with They're COVID, they clean stuff out down all, all of that shit, dude. Where you're yeah. just like, ah, oh, man. I mean, every toilet you go into smells great now. Where you're just like, ah, oh, shit, that's rare. Usually it smells yeah. like, you know, 10,000 Mexicans shit in their hands. And now it's like, oh, well, they've cleaned it 10 seconds after you get off the seat. Yeah, you know? I like that. Right. I like I like a, tur a turlet uh, butler. Oh, you right? do? Yeah. <laughs> I like a guy when, when I'm shitting, I want a guy standing right here. And he's professional enough to not make eye contact. Yeah. But he's got like a towel draped over his arm and he's just standing there waiting for my poops to come out. I'm not a fan of that, man. I don't like anybody in the bathroom. I don't like those guys. You gotta, you gotta tip him for a mint or like a no, no, no. When you wash your hands, he he's, he earns a salary. He's a butler. I'm not tipping this guy. Okay, and I'm he's also not human. Look, if you're in service, he's also not. Yeah, you just. I mean, you. If you die today, I would get another one. You it was I mean? a, it's like a pair of shoes, basically. I we had to get a truck for the company uh, like three weeks ago, right? And I, you know, you you you're at a car dealership for your entire fucking life to get this goddamn car. Um, so I go to the bathroom in there and, uh, there was a dude only in Texas, uh, who was just shining boots, getting ready to, you know, Hey, do you need your boots shine in the toilet here at the car dealership? And I was like, motherfucker, you know, I'm going to be in here that long that you're going to shine my boots in the toilet of the car dealership. That was depressing. What was even more depressing is that he was playing Chris Stapleton, who I love. And now I got to think of this guy's old weathered face as he wanted to shine my boots um as people were taking shits inside this dealership because the only thing to do there is drink coffee and shit you know uh and that yeah. guy was just living in that dealership man doing that life and now every time i hear chris stapleton i think of that guy do you think uh all these places like barbershops and shit right now mm -hmm. that particularly the hipstery ones where you go in and they're like hey you want a beer when weed becomes legal federally are they going to offer me a joint in there do you they think? should. I mean, how how much cooler would that be? Yeah. Like, you want to you rip off this bong before you get your hair cut? I'm like, yeah, actually, I do. Speaking of which, a bong. high playlist would be a good one, man, a for stoners, yeah. dude. Now, that, that, that might be your best idea yet. That's yeah. a good one. That is Snoop Dogg's playlist for oh when, he, when he gets fucking high. What does Snoop really? Dogg listen to when he gets high? Yes. Or even even better than that, what, is, what does Snoop Dogg listen to or Drake or few, any of the big guys? What do they listen to when they're trying to get into a creative mindset? That kind of shit would yeah. fucking destroy. I, and I did coolest musician story that I'll, I'll drop because I did it on another show. Um, I, I talked about this on another the show i got to smoke weed with be real from cypress hill while listening to cypress hill hits from the bong and that was like uh -huh. my end all be all of like holy shit this is surreal yeah. and awesome you checked all the boxes yeah, yeah. And, he, and he was the one who packed the bong like it was his own shit so i was like dude does life get any better than this and then you know <laughs> cut to five and a half hours later of, of the two of us watching uh cosby show reruns at nick at night uh it was not the the, the party story i was hoping for obviously but uh, yeah. it was a cool moment that I got to share with some other gentlemen, you know, and, and yeah, just have a moment. Cool. And I think that's part of your site. Like, dude, you could have people, what they get high to, dinner music. Dinner music is a big yeah. one. I mean, we, we've really seen it, seen us be used in so many creative ways. Uh, dinner music, I'll start with that. You know, it's terrible what's happened to, you know, so many local restaurants, mm -hmm. uh, or restaurants all around the, around the country. Um, but people that have, have pivoted and started doing like at home experiences and that they're what was playing in their restaurant. Um, there's a, a friend of mine is a award winning chef in Seattle. He had to close his, um, uh, his restaurants for in-house dining and he just plays the music over the, his earbuds channel so people can, and he packs a whole experience in the to go order. So it's a pretty, it, I mean, it's pretty cool with that. Um, you know, whether it, like group activities, we've been doing marathon, cycling, uh, competitions. If you're on the, if you're on boats, tying boats together, you can synchronize the playback. If you're on the golf course and every card has a speaker, uh, when you're at the tee box, it all plays together, but then everybody still has, has one. But I mean, people have connected, people have gotten married that have, have met on earbuds. I mean, so it's just, you know, we're, we, we just want to bring people together, uh, and especially, 
now <clears throat> you don't want to do this when we as a country we need to be brought together yeah forgive uh, me for the comment i'm about to make uh, uh but you want to know what trump's dump playlist is like when no, he listens I, to when he dumps out <laughs> i want to know what the fucking dude in the in the viking hat was listening to before when he was getting psyched up to go in and make prank phone calls in nancy pelosi's office. the beautiful people <laughs> the beautiful people man. Like we're gonna we're like gonna that. get them and then they get inside and they're like hey i'm going all in from nancy's room yeah <laughs> what, what, that dummy. viking guy you know he got hyped up to some music before oh, he yeah. stormed the capitol yeah, he was he yeah. was probably a storming the Capitol playlist. <laughs> Storm the Capitol. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just I mean, just for those moments when you you want to go beyond the Super Bowl, you want to take a fucking yeah. lectern. It's probably the soundtrack to fucking uh, 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 <laughs> God. What's the movie with John Voight from back in the day where he gets Varsity raped, Blues? No, the one where he gets raped in the woods. It's the only one I know. Deer Hunter. Nope. Uh, <laughs> What? Deliverance. Deliverance, yeah. yeah. The Deliverance yeah. playlist is probably what those people were listening to before they stormed the Capitol. Yeah, right? why not? Why not? But yeah, I mean, look, there's a bunch of things. Shit. Uh, doctors. Um, surgeons who were in for a long time and they have those long surgeries, they always listen to music. Mm -hmm. um, like, even uh, that would be interesting of like what the top surgeons listen to. Yeah, I mean, we, we have, right now you can search by genres and, and, and curator types like you can search by athletes you can search by artists you can search by as we as we continue to grow we'll probably uh you know we'll we'll, we'll contact you to get to some of your top ideas of how to filter by um because you've had some good ones but yeah music to get cut open to because like dude i'm my, music I'm my dentist um i'm i'm over sharing but who cares mm. it's a friday night show we're in it tonight um i i was one of those people who was born with like four extra teeth so they had to remove them, and uh, I was in there for fucking ever. And the, the dentist came over, and he was like, hey, man, you know what would help? Is if you listen to music and everything else, and he goes, bring a, a Walkman or whatever, and then, you know, I'll rip all those extra teeth out of your head, you fucking weirdo. Um, <laughs> and, like, I still would. I, I remember before I went under, you know, because I was out at a certain point. Uh, yeah. Small child, tiny body, and then I was, I was lifeless after that. But... Uh, yeah, man, what a fucking crazy thing you're into, man, because music is in all these pr professions, things, all of it. You could literally reach out to so many different people mm -hmm. with this. And the the playlists are endless at that point. Yeah, everybody connects. Yeah. You got to hook up uh, yeah. there in Fort Worth. Our buddy, uh, Darrow 36, who am I? Whatever he's going by now. He's the artist in residence for the Cowboys. He'd love to get in on this. He's like yeah. the biggest rapper out of Dallas. Yeah, yeah. I I'll definitely, I'll definitely. Yeah, uh, we can hook you guys up. up. He's a good, yeah, he's a good dude. Great. <clears throat> yeah, for sure. Who's yeah, Dan, that? I think we know a lot of the same people too. Um, I'm, I'm buddies with like Dakota Meyer and, and like Chris B. And mm. Oh, Omar. Yeah. So I've Dakota yeah. and I have another show together called American Party Podcast. I'm sure you're right. aware of that. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. He was in here yesterday. He, he's, he's uh, recently broken up with. Oh, the puzzle girl. Yeah. And uh, he and I are going to make a joint hinge profile now. Yeah. Yeah. To compete with Jared and Jack, uh, our other buddies. You have to. <clears throat> yeah, and Omar, he's a good dude. Uh, yeah, Crispy's right. great, man. What yeah. he kills alligators, too, that could be a great mix for Omar. Uh, exactly. No, alligator yeah. hunting is stupid. He's always hunting You know alligators. how you hunt alligators? You have, like, this fucking this weird hook with raw chicken on it, yep. and it's designed such that when they clamp down on it, it basically clamps their mouth shut. Mm -hmm. And then they writhe around all night and are tired, and you come by in the morning and just look at them and shoot them in the head with a forty five. Yeah. That's not hunting. Uh, you know what he's listening to? The Hook. The Hook Brings You Back by uh, Blues Traveler. <laughs> yeah. God damn it. We've, we've gone full circle here today. Yeah. Um, who do you got in the Super Bowl, by the way? <clears throat> Man. He would love to answer this question I next know. week, by no, the way. No, no. This is why I'm asking him right now. I want you on the spot. I want you to fucking pick a team. I'm, I'm going to take not even the – I think an AFC team wins. Um, and probably the – because I really like I really like the Chiefs, obviously, as a lot of people do. Um, if the Browns find you know are able to ride this wave, uh, if they get past the Chiefs, then you know, I'm 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 riding them all the way. And, and the Ravens are, are are peaking at the right time too. So um, the AFC looks really good. Mm -hmm. I'm I, I like I like Josh Allen. I like I like Buffalo. I like what they've been able to do. I've become I like watching their games. It's fun to watch, but I, I think AFC is win yeah i mean look as long as the rams don't get in i'm fine with whatever combination of teams gets in after that i just find the rams incredibly boring and i don't want to watch any of their shit 
Uh, and I also think about what would be good for the league and the world right now. And like, dude, Bills fans, holy shit. I mean, my only sadness behind that would be they can't tailgate and smash through tables mm -hmm. and they finally win the fucking Super Bowl and they can't party the, the oh, true way they want to. They would find a way. Yeah, they would they will party. But no laws could hold back yeah. Bill's Mafia if that happened. Not a chance. No. The Browns fans, like if the Browns <clears> ended up going and winning it all, that would be a, a magical thing as well. And then two years from now, they'll burn Baker Mayfield's jersey when he goes to Miami. Or the CFL. <laughs> whatever, wherever he ends up. But yeah, um, let's see. On the, on the NFC Ooh. side... I, what about you guys? Well, I want to hear your picks too. It, the Chiefs are going to win. I, I've yeah. If they if they play Chiefs Packers, eighty percent of their to their potential, they'll win. And that's yeah. that that is what it is. It is what it is. Chiefs Packers. I'm I'm going to go Packers on this one because uh, even though there is no home field advantage this year because of there's no fans, you still have to play in Lambeau, and it is going to be frigid there the next two weekends. So, good luck if you're just not used to playing in that weather. And, uh, you know, I'm looking at that Ram spread. It's at minus seven for Sunday. It took that in a six-point teaser down to minus one. Um, and it, shit, mybookie.com promo code drinking bros will half your deposit on that. But uh, that's who I, I, I think that it's going to be Packers, Chiefs, if they play to their potential. Now, I do always bet on uh, somebody to sneak in there like a, uh, an underdog. So about six weeks ago, I slid in a grande, an Ariana Grande, on the Bills. And yeah. just because I, I think I think the Chiefs play lazy enough that if, if one team is going to catch them sleeping in the AFC, it would be Josh Allen and the Bills because he's he's hard to defend when he's running the ball. And it's not mm -hmm. like the Chiefs defense is that great. So if, if they get caught napping, the Bills could sneak in there, I think, out of the AFC. But I'm, I'm all mm -hmm. in on the Packers. Uh, but look, the other stories out of the, the NFC would be great, too. If Brady goes back to the Super Bowl without Belichick. And plays against Patrick Mahomes. And ends up beating yeah. Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> holy shit, man. Um, I mean, nobody has any questions right now about who the best ever is. But I think that if that happened, that might put him out of reach for even future generations. If that happens, like, I don't know how, he should retire. Yeah. If, if Tom Brady were to somehow win the Super Bowl this year. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, also, the Super Bowl in Tampa. Yeah, and Mahomes would never be able to catch up, no matter how many championships nope. he won or what stats he put up after that. The fact that Brady beat him at 43. Yes. That'd be it. That would be the end-all, be-all story, dude. Brady versus Mahomes, yeah. and Brady wins it. Holy shit. And I don't, I'm not a big Tom Brady fan. Like, if you put his playlist up there... Um, <laughs> I, I bet it's just all bullshit. It's probably dude. white noise, to be honest. It's like it's like Coldplay and I. I uh, yellow, they yeah, were all yeah. yellow. It's just I said. And he's like, song, you know what? Yeah. They were yellow. They were yellow, man. Um, tb 12com yeah. slash. <laughs> yeah, forward slash yeah. Thinking Bros. <laughs> I I think that would be a snoozer of a playlist. Like I would be really shocked if he was, you know throwing rage against the machine on mm -hmm. uh, to go out to the yeah. field it's probably whatever his wife picked i mean it'd be him. better than uh than tebow's tebow's would be all like sunday morning music it'd be christ it? music yeah it'd be a lot of creed yeah tim tebow's <laughs> We're all right over. tim tebow's creed list would be unbelievable dude yeah i wish he was here right now so i could make fun of him so do i um i, again, I, actually, I actually like tim tebow I, said, oh, I think he's a good dude, but I'm never going to stop making fun of him, ever. I will never, yeah. not until, when, when, when he's old and I'm old, I will still be making fun of that motherfucker forever. Yeah. I don't know why. It's like, I, it's like Nickelback. I go back yeah. to when he wasn't boning and he was with that hot-ass girl in college who had the huge tits at Florida. He was probably soaking, right? Yeah, I just, you know, it's through a sheet or something. Like, yeah. who fucking knows? But I was like, <laughs> man, you're Tim Tebow. Because he's a great-looking dude. Jacked. Yeah. Man. Famous as shit, he, won two championships. He should have been boning the entire time in Florida. Yeah. He, he, he's still everywhere. I mean, he's mm. anytime you turn on the TV, he's there. And he's, he's got a book coming out or a speaking engagement or whatever. And, uh, he, he's an easy target, so I'll, I'll give you credit there. I, uh, I have a couple of Tim Tebow stories, but uh -oh. unless you want them, I can share them. I, we were we trained together for the draft, and so I, I got to know him pretty well. And The first time I met him, it was... Uh, my both of our junior years, Miami was playing Florida in the swamp, and we were the two captains. And normally, uh, at the uh, at a coin flip uh, before the game, it's kind of a I hate you handshake. Um, but he like embraced me and stuck his face 
two inches away from mine and said, and I'm a Christian, but he said a 10 minute long prayer with like 90,000 people watching us and like the refs checking their watch. And like, it just became like a very, very long, uh, uh, you know, time. And then he just got done and I didn't know what to say. So I, I kind of panicked and just said, thank you. (laughs) 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 But, but, uh, but I, I get back to the sideline and I don't even remember who won the toss and our head coach, Randy Shannon came up to me. He was like, what the heck was all that about? I was like, I have no idea, but I remember, I remember telling him and thinking it's like, if God cares who wins this game, we have no chance because. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. He put in the work. Tebow put in the work. He was bookmark this dude. The Tebow Christ story, the Tebow prayer story would be a great one. Uh, Thoughts and prayers for Tebow. Yeah. I always think about that too. Like Dabo, like Dabo fucking Sweeney. I'm, I, I'm not a big fan of his, the whole thing all shucks televangelist bullshit but i thought the same thing after that ohio state game i was like i guess christ isn't a a a clemson fan today Mm. you know what i'm saying like jesus probably doesn't he probably watches like soccer not football right he's from palestine yeah that's true he's not gonna watch american football doesn't make any sense no i wonder what his mix is like jesus's mix you know oh yeah Yeah, I don't know. I think, Um, I mean, Jesus was kind of a counterculture guy. He'd probably be a hippie now, right? Yeah, I could see a lot of Grateful Dead out of Jesus. Yeah. See that? Jam bands. There you go. (laughs) Jam band Jesus? Stuff that plays well behind. Like, if you're on top of a fucking mountain and you're trying to feed a bunch of people, you know what I mean? You want something playing in the background because there's going to be some dead air. You can't just talk the whole time. So you want a a soundtrack to that. It's probably... Kanye's new gospel album. Oh, that would be a good one. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, Yeah. man. Um, That's an interesting thing. A lot of people fantasize about time machines and going back in time and doing stuff. Like, a lot of military people are like, man, if we go back with our weapons now, we'd blah, 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 blah. I'm like, yeah, that's, that's an interesting thing to think about. What if you went back to first century Rome and Palestine with like hip hop music yeah, or death metal, like Lamb of God or some shit. Yeah. They would think you were from fucking Mars. They, well, they wouldn't even know what that is. Probably they would yeah, think they were. you were the devil. Yeah. They would think you were the devil, which is kind of cool, I guess, but not, not optimal. Cause they kill people. They think are like the devil. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously. Obviously I still, I've, I've got my money's on creed still like arms for wide Jesus? open. Yeah. Arms wide open for Jesus. I don't know. I think Jesus would probably be a Motown gospel guy more than really more than nineties rock. Yeah. All right. Like Aretha or, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Look, man, if anybody's out there and wants to make a Jesus playlist, I'd love to hear it. A lot of Kirk Franklin, yeah. I bet. Jesus, you know? if you're out there and you want to make a playlist. Yeah. Head us Feel up. free, dude. We'll have you on the show. Yeah. Uh, tag me on Instagram, Jesus. Um, Je- go to at ST James, ST James oh, on my, Instagram. If, if Jesus had Instagram, he would fucking have not come back to save him humanity yeah like he he would read like he would be on instagram for two days he'd be like no nah. no nah, we're all good here uh, yeah. you guys you guys uh, i told you this was gonna happen that's what he would say we don't want to hang out with you guys yeah, yeah but if that bread and wine playlist drops let us know yeah do that uh yeah just, 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 and, and have it something like fun and flirty because everybody names a, a playlist something fun and flirty yeah bread and wine playlist is a good one or bread and, bread and, and fish loaves and fish loaves and fish playlist would probably be better right? i yeah. think you go christ party of 13 and then it's just 13 tracks you know what i'm saying uh, for all the yeah. apostles on there. Yeah. What about the one that got replaced? <laughs> That's a like bonus song. Matt, Matt, Athias, Matt Athias replaced Judas after Judas died. Yeah. So. That's a bonus song on there, yeah. a bonus track. Uh, now's the point in the show we get to the drinking bro of the week, which is someone who has inspired you or helped you become the person you are today. Who would you like to give the drinking bro of the week to? Oh, man. That's a good one. Um, my dad... Uh, we'd probably be on that list. Uh, I guess it's a list of one. Um, so yeah, I'll go ahead and give it to my dad. Um, shout out to Mike Fox. So Mike Fox, it. is he still alive? He is. Yeah. Right Mike, on. Mike Fox is a strong name. It too. is. Dude. That's a, that's a name. Like if somebody's like, Hey, who's, who's over there? Uh, you know, Dave, Mike Fox, like, Oh, Mike Fox. Oh is shit. There. Mike Fox is over yeah, there. I know there's God not, there's damn. not, there's not going to be any trouble. Yeah. Yeah. There's not going to be any trouble. Cause Mike Fox is over there. There's one gun yeah. in this room. Who has it? Mike Fox has got that goddamn yeah. thing. You know yeah. what I'm saying? If you had to guess who had the gun in the room, you guys are from Fort Worth. I'm sure you've got plenty of guns. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A couple yeah. saves full. Yeah. I, I bet you do. Uh, look, kids, you can go to earbudsmusic.com and check out everything we've been talking about today. That's E A R B U D S music. 
Podcast.com. Dude, if you get if you guys get into the podcast space, hit us up, man. Yeah. Um, yeah. This is uh, this is endless. The possibilities are endless with what you guys are doing, and uh, it's cool to have you on the show. Uh, we wanted to get this out to our listeners before these games start, so mm -hmm. you can actually see uh, what they are yeah, listening to during this. Download the app if if one of your favorite players is playing this weekend. Try to find them on there. If one of your favorite teams is playing, try to find somebody from their team and just experience it and see what it's like. I mean, it seems like a great idea to me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and if John Popper's listening, he can go fuck himself. Uh, <laughs> Just don't need it in my life. You know what I'm saying? And uh, that harmonica, I can hear it. If you cup your ears, yeah, if you cup your ear, you can hear Popper playing harmonica somewhere. He's like the uh, pipe. Right out, just coming right out of a fucking Olive Garden. Yeah. You know? He's the Pied Piper for, for assholes in the 90s. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever hear that Mick Jagger story about John Popper before we got up the air? <laughs> That's that great. Fat, that fat guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so when the Stones go on tour, they always have an opening <clears throat> act. And they usually hand choose them, right? And uh, mm -hmm. whoever that person is gets to come on and sing one song on stage with the Stones. Um, like, for instance, Christina Aguilera was, was it for one year. And they, uh, she came out and sang uh, Crossfire Hurricane. Uh, or no, I'm sorry. Well, uh, children, it's just a, yeah, just a shot away. That one, just a shot away. Uh, anyways, Popper, that was his dream because Mick Jagger plays harmonica. It was, he was like, oh man, I want to play with Mick Jagger on stage. This would be awesome. And uh, so he walks over to, to Mick Jagger's dressing room and it was the last time they were opening up for the Stones. And he goes, hey, I'd really love to play with Mick Jagger tonight. Harmonica, like I'm, this is my dream and blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. um, and so the publicist was like, all right, cool. I'll ask Mick. Mick was getting ready and he didn't know John Popper was right outside the room and, and, uh, and he goes, who, who? Oh, John Popper, that fat bloke. No, it's, it's tell him that fucker plays way too many goddamn harmonicas. And Popper overheard it and it completely fucking shattered him. So, uh, the greatest story. I didn't know that story. Yeah, if you're John Popper, you gotta ever. know who you are. You play a harmonica, <laughs> dude. <laughs> like the music is good. Just let, let the music, let your, let your success define like how you feel about your music you don't need to hear from mick ja mick jagger what the fuck is mick jagger <laughs> mick jagger is the worst no the fucking the rolling best. stones fucking suck there's th stones three, are my favorite by the way those three chord yeah. fucking motherfuckers the only thing they're good at is being old yeah they've been around for so long it seems like you're supposed to like them now but they still suck you dan's writing a book called how to do drugs and drink like an adult that should be your fucking role models is the Rolling Stones. No, as six. drug users, they are. As yeah. musicians, I think they suck. Oh, boy. That's a tough one. The, go, go, please do me a favor if you're out there listening to this right now. Go ahead and fucking go find the music video that Mick Jagger and David Bowie made together and watch the whole goddamn thing from start to finish. I'm not saying it's not homo. <laughs> I'm Get not the saying fuck it's out not homo. It is the worst shit of all time. 80s music. Was mostly shit. I think Let's they bone real. though. I think. Oh they, yeah. I think they might have sucked each other's dicks. Yeah, I think they probably at least were on two sides of a fucking dual-sided flashlight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know yeah. what I mean? Once, like once, and they made eye contact. But it's it's two of the best going at it. Like I don't, I don't, you know, we don't kink shame here, obviously. No. Um, and if you want, you know, to take this interview into your next boardroom meeting mm -hmm. and just play this. Yeah, with everybody, I don't uh, know. I might have you just guys join if that's cool. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Siegfried yeah. is dead. Yeah, yep. Talked about that earlier. Wow. R.I.P. Siegfried. Um, At least he didn't get mauled. Yeah, uh, the other guy lived. We talked about that earlier. Uh, Jason, we hey, we greatly appreciate it, man. Great idea. Like, it's rare that somebody's got a fucking dope ass company that it's just like, holy shit, why hasn't anybody done this? Yeah. Um, so go check out earbudsmusic.com and then watch the Chiefs uh, against <laughs> the Browns this weekend. And you know. Pretend the Browns are going to win because that's maybe, not going to happen. Maybe I'll get on here and make a playlist and you can listen to the playlist I'm listening to as I'm getting really high before I go to the game. I'd love, I'd love to hear your, yeah, your high playlist. I, yeah. I'll do Please that. Please do. For sure. Please do. Uh, All right, guys. Thanks for having me. This has been a lot of fun. Absolutely. Yeah, for Jason Fox, D'Anthony, D'Anthony Holloway, I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone. Good night.